It's only 16 pages. I suggest you read the whole letter. And then you can read these two and these. Oh God, I'm a book shunder. For today, let's just talk about the 2023 letter, which came along with the annual report of Berkshire Hathaway. I want to talk about the things we can learn as investors, whether you're a beginner, whether you're an advanced investor, what you can learn from this letter and apply it to our own investments and even to our life. Actually, Warren Buffett's letter will help me as a YouTuber. The letter can be divided into four sections. The first one is a tribute to Charlie Munger, who passed away last November. Here we will talk about the contribution of Charlie Munger to the growth of Berkshire Hathaway. Warren Buffett calls him the architect of Berkshire Hathaway. Warren Buffett learned a lot from Charlie Munger and we also can learn from him. The second section we are going to talk about is the overall business of Berkshire Hathaway. In the third section, we are going to look at some particular businesses, some businesses which did not do well. Why they did not do well and some businesses which did well, why they did well and how we can learn from this in our own investment buying businesses. And finally, for the fourth section, we are going to look at the annual report. There is a section there that I want to focus on about the secret investment of Berkshire Hathaway. Let's start with the tribute to Charlie Munger. Warren Buffett mentioned how Charlie Munger changed his view on investment. He started Warren Buffett as a deep value investor. That is buying stocks like Benjamin Graham wrote in security analysis or the intelligent investor. This is interesting. Deep value investing, this is something I do. So what exactly is deep value investing? It is buying securities, stocks that are massively undervalued. Maybe the company is going bankrupt, but the market is overreacting on this. This is what Warren Buffett was doing. So he was buying dozens of such companies and making a huge returns on his partnership. And Berkshire Hathaway itself, which was a failing business, was an example of the deep value investment. So Charlie Munger told him, not to do that anymore, not to look for another Berkshire Hathaway, but to actually use the cash of Berkshire Hathaway to buy good businesses. According to Charlie Munger, deep value investing works only on a small scale. And for me, it is still working. That's because it is on a small scale. But when you grow, of course, eventually you will have to go only with value investing. Warren Buffett calls himself the general contractor of Berkshire Hathaway, while he calls Charlie Munger the architect. And it's because of this idea and other ideas that Charlie Munger gave him to grow the business. And usually when we look at buildings, we talk about the architect, who's the architect of this great building, but we forget who are the people who built it. In business, this is the opposite. We think about the people who built the business. In this case, it's Warren Buffett, but there's also the architect, Charlie Munger in the background, without whom all of this would not have happened. And an example I will give you is Apple. We talk about the general contractor, Steve Jobs, but very often we forget about the architect, that is Steve Wozniak. As I mentioned, I learned something as a YouTuber from that letter. And it's about the audience, knowing your audience. For Warren Buffett, he writes this letter to his shareholders. And when he's writing the letter, he's thinking of, of his sister, Bertie, who is a shareholder. So it's hard to write a letter to someone you don't know. But when you can think of someone that you know, you write to that person. And his sister is one of the shareholders of Berkshire Hathaway. So it's the same thing when I'm making a video. Sometimes I try to think about who's the person on the other side watching this video. You make the best possible video for that person. And it helps. So make sure to smash the like button so that this video spreads for the YouTube universe. It's something actually we can all learn, not just about YouTube, not just about a letter, but in businesses, in life in general. Warren Buffett then writes about net income versus operating income. This is something that he has been writing about for the past years, that because of the changes in the accounting principles, the net income of Berkshire Hathaway does not give us a good picture of the real earnings of the company because it takes into account unrealized capital gain. And they own so many stocks that their fluctuations in the stock market affects the net income of the company. But in reality, the operating earnings, the earnings that the company is generating, is not uh, fluctuating that much. Now coming to the best section in the letter, this is the part I like the most, where Warren Buffett writes about the goal of Berkshire Hathaway. The goal of Berkshire Hathaway is simple, and this is something we should do as investors, have simple goals. So if you buy businesses, full businesses, a portion of them, these businesses need to have good economics, good fundamentals, and they need to be enduring. 
There are a few things we can look for for such businesses. One of them is returns on invested capital. He did not use the words returns on invested capital, but even if you are going to read his past letters, you will see that he talks about uh, returns on invested capital. That is, you want to invest in a business which requires low capital invested, but gives you high returns. So if let's say you have invested $1 billion in the business, and when we are talking about invested capital, it includes debt and equity, the business is giving you only, let's say, $50 million. It's not worth it. You invested so much money, maybe for the first couple of years, you are not making that much. But if over the long term, you're still making $50 million, it's not worth it. But another business is making $200 million. It's a much better business. If you want to learn more about returns on invested capital and other metrics I use to find quality businesses, you can have a look at my course on the Super Investors Club. The Super Investors Club is a club for value investors. This is where we meet, where we share ideas, where we share our analysis, our thesis, and of course, we grow our portfolio together. And finally, Berkshire Hathaway looks for businesses with good management. And over the long term, he expects that these businesses are going to do better than the average American corporation. And if Berkshire Hathaway owns these businesses, of course, Berkshire Hathaway is going to do better than the average American corporation. And if you are going to read his past letters, you will understand what he means by the average American corporation doing better than them. He's not talking about stock prices. He's talking about returns on equity. So if American businesses on average are growing their equity by 15%, he wants to go beyond that. He wants to be them. He wants to do better than that. So that's why it is important to read these letters, to understand what really what Warren Buffett talks about. He's talking about returns on equity, the amount of equity the business has today, how much you can grow it in the future. Stock prices are important. Over the long term, they correlate to equity, but over the short term, it always fluctuates. So you cannot rely on stock prices to know if a business is doing well or not. And I'm sure you already know that Warren Buffett talked about the casino-like behavior we see in the market today and hopefully you're not doing that. He then gives us a few examples of great businesses in his portfolio, Coca-Cola, American Express, Occidental Petroleum, and the Japanese big five companies. And he says that he's unable to predict currency movements. Therefore, he took debt in Japanese yen in order to buy these stocks. And he cannot hire someone to do that job. So if you're trying to make money on Forex, good luck with that. Then Warren Buffett talks about one of his poor performances in the past year, BNSF. BNSF is the largest railroad in the world. But the railroad business is capital intensive. We talk about businesses which requires low capital. This is not the case for railroad because there's a lot of expenses in order for you to run a railroad. So it is a capital intensive business, but he invested in the business in 2009 at a really good price. So he was able to buy it at a really good price. So even if the business today and even over the long term is capital intensive, because he was able to get it at a good price, it doesn't matter. And he's saying that the business will be here a century from now and he's holding it forever. So it is possible for you to invest in a business which is capital intensive, which requires a lot of capital to operate, but the business has a mode like the NSF. It is hard for you to come and take their business away. They already have a mode. And also the business is long lasting. You know that even 50 years from now, railroads are going to operate. So you're not worried about the endurance of the business. And finally, I want to talk about the secret investment of Warren Buffett. It is on the annual report. It's not written there. It is still a secret. The SEC has agreed not to let the general public know about this investment. He has asked this. It's okay, but we can guess that the investment is in the financial sector. But because when we look at the changes in cost basis for the financial stocks in his portfolio, you will see that there is a missing $5 billion. So he invested in at least one company worth $5 billion and he's keeping it a secret. Which company it is, we don't know. And I have some ideas. I'm going to share it in another video. For the time being, I will recommend you watch this video about PayPal. Have a nice day and goodbye.